So, um, so anyway, that was that. And then we had uh, Kenny Omega and Laredo Kid, which was an absolutely fantastic match. Uh, Laredo Kid improved so much, and it was uh, Kenny Omega doing the Ric Flair World Champion bit, as good as Ric Flair, you know, against you know a Ricky Morton or or Barry Windham. I mean, your your best Ric Flair opponents. That's this match was was so good, and I mean, it's like it was. Um, you know, I mean, a lot of people were writing this is Kenny Omega's fuck you to like uh, all of his critics because he did everything fantastic that they say he can't do. It was great, great selling, great, great carrying. Not that like Laredo Kid was being carried, but he I mean, Omega carried the match. But Laredo Kid has all these fantastic moves, which makes him a perfect opponent for Kenny Omega. Um, you know, th- it was, uh, you know, Omega was selling, 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 gave him near falls. I mean, if you're watching the match, you would know, like, Laredo Kid this week is not beating Kenny Omega. In fact, you know that the AEW champion's not going somewhere and losing. So you know that. But Omega was selling these near falls and these sub- even submissions even more than near falls. He would get in these submissions and he would be, like, just, like, picking his hand up to tap and he would like put it down like three quarters and then stop like he wouldn't tap and then he would finally get to the ropes i mean he was doing um that's like the stuff that like uemura does or something in japan like this the great selling of the submissions and um in the end he won with a one-winged angel off the middle ropes which is absolutely insane and um after a little bit of distraction by Ma- Michael Nakazawa, there was a spot where Kenny Omega did the Terminator dive. Laredo Kid moved. Michael Nakazawa um, was supposed to catch him. And, I mean, it's not like he didn't touch him, but it was one of those things where Kenny Omega landed on his back on the on the ground. I mean, he was, I don't, the fall was barely broken. I thought, I remember when it happened, I'm going like, oh, man. I hope Tony Khan's not watching because he's never going to let these guys go to AAA again. His million-dollar player, you know, is out there and uh, nearly just kills himself on a dive. You know, on a you know, it is Triple Mania. It's not like it's on a small show, but still, you know, when he's got the world title and when he's got a match on Wednesday. But um, Omega is is fine. Nakazawa was feeling bad that he didn't make the catch, but um, you know, there was. Um, El Hio del Vikingo showed up in the middle of the match just because they had they have a, a, a sponsorship which is like a tire company, so they had these like tires, you know, a setup of all these tires, and the the they're they're like on the ground, you know, a couple a couple of tires, and there's one standing up, so it's not really all that steady. So um, of course, Laredo Kid does a dive off of the top of the tires anyway, and then behind the tires is this stage it's about um a little bit higher than the tires and um el hio del vikingo shows up and just uh jumps off the stage onto uh, michael nakazawa um so that was uh you know big big you know big big spot and um yeah some just great near falls like like Kenny went for the one-winged angel and then uh, turned into a front-rolling cradle and then turned into Crusetta submission. Um, Poison Rana by Laredo Kid, 450 for a great near fall. Uh, Laredo drop kicked the left knee. Uh, he came off with an os cutter into a V-trigger. Um, uh, Laredo Kid kicked out of the uh, J-driller. Uh yeah, just, um, you know, Laredo just kept working on the left leg. He had 450 on the knee. Uh, Omega got his knee up, which sort of hurt Laredo for a second, but it hurt his own knee worse. Then that was the Crusetta knee lock, basically, or leg submission on Omega, and that was where the really great rope break came. Uh, Laredo kid missed a Torneo uh, to the knee. Uh, powerbomb into the buckles by Omega. Gut wrench into a powerbomb. Which um, I don't know if it was Hugo or the other announcer, but they called it a Doctor Williams bomb as opposed to just a doctor bomb. And um, Omega's limping into a V trigger. Uh, yeah, really, just like uh, 
there are people saying that it was this was the match of the year for Mexico for this year. I mean, I didn't see, I haven't seen enough Mexico to where I could say that, but I could say that um, if this match was in WWE this year, it would be, um, uh, you know, I don't know if I would say it was as good as Tyler Bate, and not Tyler Bate, um, that the Walter and Ilya Dragunov match, because it's so, it's just so different. I mean, it's it's more complex. It's it, it's it's more depth to the match, better story to the match, but I don't, I can't say it was a better match than that, but um, I I don't know. I mean, it was probably better than any other WWE match this year. Just fantastic match. Um, better than, there's a few AEW, you know, like Omega and Page and the Young Bucks or Young Bucks and FTR. You know, some of those matches were better um, than this, but um, but just, you know, if if there was a crowd I think this would be like, you know, an all, a real classic match. Every, every, every was just raving about it. And um, at the end, Kenny Omega would not shake hands. And he talked about he's going to win more belts. And then the main event was Pagano and Chessman, hair versus hair. And these two guys, I mean, you, you I, I would tell you, because it's on, it's, it's, the, the show is on YouTube right now. Um, and it's free. It's on Facebook. I don't know if it's on Facebook, right, you know, um, for replays, but I know the YouTube you can replay because I had the replay on afterwards today. And, um, but I would, I would say, like, I would, I would recommend the first two matches, but I would say that the last two matches are pretty much like almost like must sees. They're that good. This match was just freaking nuts. It's two guys who are just out there trying to completely kill themselves. They went through, uh, you know, it's it's just a bloodbath hair match, uh, dives into tables and chairs. I mean, Chessman did a dive, a, a running dive over the top, head first onto like a bunch of chairs on the floor. I mean, I'm just, you know, that may have been the worst, but, um, you know, Pagano certainly was trying to kill himself on numerous occasions in this match. Um, there were, um, geez, uh, there's a belly to chess man gave him a belly to belly into a ladder, breaking the ladder. Um, uh, they were beat. Chess man was beating on him with a cookie sheet. Uh, Pagano did a code breaker on a cookie sheet. Uh, Pagano tope chess man moved and he crashed. That's that's the one where um, um, uh, chess man moved and he crashed into a ladder. Um, it's actually a tope con hero. Con hero um breaking the ladder pagano juiced from that one uh chessman missed the tope into the chairs uh we had a bunch of run-ins just to have them el, el tejano and uh, tejano jr and scorpion el ray scorpion came out and then um mr season octagon came out which led to a bunch more dives and anyway um the end result was that uh, Pagano won? They were so. So what happened was they're they're just they're punching at each other. Then they get out of the ring, and Chessman grabs a guitar and he thinks he's going to hit Pagano with it. And he turns around and he whacks Hugo Savinovich in the head. You know, the announcer for like no reason whatsoever. Hugo juices. And, you know, they have doctors running out and everything, and they're all, like, taping up Hugo, which distracts them. So these guys went to another part of the building while they're going with Hugo, where they're on this giant stage overlooking a truck. So it's like, okay, these guys are going off the stage, um, and they're going to the back of the truck because there's a table set up, which, of course, is what happened. There was one point where... um um, I think it was Chess Man was supposed to do. I believe he was. The idea was to do a um, uh, Hurricane Rana out of the ring, you know, from the top rope onto a table, and then Chess Man like he, he jumps up to do it, he slips, so he just like falls back and he grabs Pagano, and they both just fall backwards, you know, uh, through the through the table. I mean, it's just like, oh my god. So anyway. Um, it ends up where uh, these guys both go through the table in the back of a truck, which did have a crash pad. I mean, it was very, I mean, it was a very spectacular big dive, but it actually was 
far safer than about the other 50 moves that they did. Um, and it was not a pin. They just, the referee just stopped the match, you know, with the idea that, like, uh, chess man's just too hurt to continue. So they come out and um, they take chess man. He's dead out on a stretcher. But it's a hair match. We have to live up to our stipulations. So before taking him to the hospital, they took him to the ring where um, chess man's father and chess man's daughter shave chess man's head or at least they try to because they are not hairstylists and they did a pretty bad job this guy's like between the blood and the sweat uh the hair wasn't coming off that well but um they tried and uh they end up taping up hugo like a mummy um and uh it was it was an incredible spectacle i would like like as garbage matches goes it was a garbage match but it was it was so crazy that that you know I, I I would say go see it. I mean, some people won't like it. It's it's the kind of style that I generally hate, but I have to admit that it was like. Um, and I don't really like guys like attempting to uh, end their careers. And I granted, you know, Pagano will do that every single night anyway. I mean, it's not like he's doing it because it's Triple Mania. I mean, Pagano does this in every show. Somehow he's still alive. Somehow he doesn't have a broken neck. I've seen him. I have seen him take many, many, many worse falls than he took tonight. Um, I just think he's just incredibly durable or something. But um, it was it was something to see. I mean, it's not, you know, the Omega match is much, much, much better. The Omega match was on a different level from everything else on the show, even like the first two matches that are fun. The Omega match is like just way, way up, you know, higher class. It's like, you know, I mean, the Omega match could, could headline... Uh, with Laredo Kid, it could headline a New Japan show and be blow away. It could headline AEW and be the best match on the show. Um, it was that good. So that was Triple Mania. It was a. Uh, it was a. Uh, with no fans, it was really overall. You know, I mean, there's the bad matches and all, and it wasn't everything wasn't great, but it was a great show, no doubt. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got twelve thousand episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.